equate sound to a hangover. Yeah. Truly needs voice lessons or something. I mean, I'm thinking if you're... Yeah, uh, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. At least, like, the okay. screams are R2-D2 or something. Something spacey. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is exactly what I expected the black hole to sound like. So I feel like we're going to have to take it next level in Hollywood, right? Because it's always got to be wow. something Oh, more. yeah, you got to go bigger. Yeah. Hey. Got to. Always up. All right, yeah. you guys. Well, go off into your black hole of the weekend and have fun. <laughs> um, be safe, though, because we still have a lot of busy weather out there. Yeah, we do. We will keep it going on America's Morning Headquarters, getting you through the mid-morning hours and helping you plan for all the big events ahead. Thanks for sticking with us here as we head on through this Friday. End of the week here for you. The weekend is upon us, and I'm sure uh, hopefully you have some plans to get out and enjoy it. Question, because will the weather cooperate? Right, exactly. All right, so uh, today on the show, we got a lot to talk about. We're going to recap all of the storms that were fierce from last night. We'll show you just how mm -hmm. strong those winds were. And we're also going to talk about some news with La Nina getting set up for the season yeah. and what it could mean for the drought, your temperatures, and hurricane season. Yeah, so lots to get to. Of course, school, that's almost out, right? Uh, but Mother Nature has a few more. words. We're talking about La Nina coming up, um, but now we're talking about a derecho yesterday that moved through the upper Midwest here. This is where we are right now. This is what's left of it. That storm system, that derecho, and all the storms that went along with it here, those are over. But we do still have a front. We still have an active weather situation with thunderstorms and even um, there was one severe thunderstorm warning in Oklahoma that one has been allowed to expire we now have a flash flood warning and some of this rain has just been persisting and heavy with some bigger rates in some of the the same areas but let's go back you guys have to see this look what happened yesterday afternoon in Nebraska with a combination of a dust storm and a thunderstorm so we had a haboob that basically uh, was moving out here out of the high plains um, there it is right there let me draw on that so you can see it right in here right watch this right there right there right there so that's a dust storm coming on in that dust traveled and combined with thunderstorms i mean it was a wall of dust visibility was down to zero the national weather service in north platte had issued a dust storm warning and then they issued a severe thunderstorm warning so there was so much happening right in here some strong um, damaging winds along with that dust that reduced visibility and the the, the visuals here um, it was just literally looked like a wall of dust it was a gust front of dust that came out of that thunderstorm it was everything all combined now that was just one piece when actually small piece when you look at the big piece picture yesterday because we had multiple rounds of strong thunderstorms with fierce winds like over 70 80 over 90 over 100 mile per hour winds in some cases i'm going to give you some perspective on that overall more than 330 reports of severe weather yesterday the majority of them were strong damaging winds we had more than uh, uh, I forget the number now, I'm in my head, <laughs> more than 100 at least of some of those um, really strong wind gusts that, you know, uh, the more than 60 or 70 mile per hour winds. Let's look at some of the reports. Benson trees were down um, in Erdahl. Semi trucks flipped over on I-94. That wasn't the only place that that happened, actually. I saw uh, reports of that from Nebraska as well, that kind of scene with, you know, a strong wind knocking over a semi truck. Stone Bridge, we had um, a mile's worth of power lines that were snapped there in South Dakota. Here's more. In Vining, this is up into Minnesota, we had reports of a water spout on West Mason Lake. There actually were only a handful of tornado reports yesterday. The majority of the uh, risks were with strong damaging winds along with that hail risk as well. You go down to near the Sioux Falls area in Worthing where we had 76 mile per hour winds and many of these really strong wind gusts weren't just estimated, they were measured. Lee had wind of 80 miles per hour. Because of all the wind we have outages still ongoing here with power out in Minnesota, more than 53,000 customers. And you can see some of the counties, including in Hennepin County, that has had at the moment more than five and a half thousand. And quick look at where we saw the strongest of the winds and how strong those winds were. Leading the list, trip South Dakota, 107 miles per hour. And I, and I checked and that was a measured win. So let's go into Dr. Greg Postel. I mean, the amount of energy in the atmosphere yesterday mm -hmm. was just, you know, off the chart. It was at the top of the charts. It was at the high end of the scale. Yeah. I mean, it's not very often that you see 100 mile per hour wind gusts yeah. and a lot of 80 plus mile per hour wind right. gusts over such a big area. You know, I think you tweeted this out too, and I remember seeing this on social media from the Storm Prediction Center. This was one of the top events that we've seen in recent years. Yeah, I have that actually. Let me, let me show folks this. Let's do that. Where, um, yeah, so number two, 
in terms of the number of days with hurricane force wind gusts. And I mean, you go back and you look at the, the dates though, 2021, this year, 2020, that was that big Iowa derecho that, you know, smashed through the middle part of Iowa, started in Nebraska, 2020. So four out of the five, Greg, happened yeah. in the last two years. In the last couple of years. Yeah. And I know one of them was that uh, incredible derecho over Iowa a yeah. couple of summers yeah. ago. Right. That was unbelievable. But this one, this event, so far it's preliminary, actually surpassed that in the number of. In the number of them. Event. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not quite as intense at the peak, but certainly maybe more of them. Yeah. Excellent point, Jen. Thank you. Thank Alex, you. and to you. It's a very poignant scene right there, Justin, really making the point of, you know, what's happening, not just there, but across the country with the mm -hmm. concerns for the drought and, of course, the fire concerns that go along with it. Dr. Greg Postel, and the reason we're bringing this up right now is in the news is that La Nina is expected again for the third straight year as we go into fall. The trifecta, right? And you A know, triple dip. right? And it's not everything, right? Because we talk about El Nino. La Nina, we should explain, is um, the temperatures of the waters in parts of the, the Pacific. Right. So that's what drives whether it's El Nino or La Nina. When it's um, cooler than average, that's La Nina. And it's it's the April temperatures were well below what you typically expect. Right. And so the the fact that you the the the, the uh, Weather could be cooler, right? But overall, you would expect in a La Nina year to be warmer in those areas. It's one of those things where you look back on the summer. It's mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, that was hurricane. So now I'm worried about hurricanes. <laughs> so right, the statistics yeah. tell, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so that opens up the door for a tropical system to sneak on in underneath it. There's nothing to steer it. Right. Get a La Nina year, we worry about the increase in the number of tropical systems, which would right. you know increase the risk of right. getting a landfall. Just look at the past two seasons, right. both La Nina years. Right. That's happened. Cross our fingers, hope this sort of deviates from that yeah. trend. You never know. It, Odds at this point are stacking towards a busy hurricane yeah, season. Yeah, very we'll be interesting. here through it all. Mid-May, and it's even more ridiculous. Um, really, really hot times are just stretching across yeah. a lot of the nation. I wonder how close it was to, to these, an all-time all May record. Yeah. We need to look, that, look up. that up. Yeah. So much to talk about today. We had some really fierce thunderstorms yesterday move across the Midwest here. Um, a number of storms that produced hurricane force wind gusts. These were thunderstorms. And now we have a few more today. So let's see how today's weather is going to compare. Yeah, bring in Dr. Postel. And let's get back out to Justin Michaels, who's live in Orange County, California. And, you know, Justin, one question I wanted to ask you is, is there that, that smell of smoke in the air? Can you feel it when you're breathing? Because I'm looking at the view behind you. It seems like there's a perfectly blue sky. Well, no, definitely there is the smell, and in fact, there's lots of particulate in the air. As soon as we're off the air, this mask goes back on. Our entire crew has masks on, and most of the people here. To tell us what is coming up on that special day and what's coming up this weekend on the Weather Channel. Hard to believe school is getting out already for a lot of kids, especially in the yeah. South. My nieces and nephews in New York have a little ways to go yet. They go to June up in New York. Ooh. But yeah, we are just about there. Summer vacation is about to begin. And like you guys said, Kids to Park Day is around the corner. It encourages kids and families to get outside and create their own adventure. By the way, guys, is National Dog Moms Day. I'm a oh, dog mom right dog here. Mom. And to put yeah. that together with Bike Week, I thought I'd show a cute picture of uh, Penny. We've got a trailer for her that I use behind my bike and that's how we get into the out there. It's just one of those things. You uh, that's how you kind of snuck into some events sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That is pretty yeah. cool. Um, I'm definitely a yeah. dog mom. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. So Penny's got to get you a gift for dog mom day. She should. Um, yeah. I don't know what that learned how to recycle. I did yes. see that. Yes, uh, on yeah. pattern yesterday. Yes. So maybe that's what she'll do. I'm still trying to get her to close the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it sounds like a great show. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, well, we've got some events as well for yep. folks looking ahead to the weekend. So we'll give you some forms up pretty quickly. It does. Uh, of course, the one thing you have to watch out for running in any of these races across the country is, of course, pollen. Mm -hmm. well, let's get you to your allergy tracker here. As well, with, as with all of the fancy moon sightings, this one has a name. Yep. We're going to talk about the Super Flower Blood Moon. Uh, joining us now is friend of the show, Michelle Nichols, Director of Observing at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. Michelle, always great to have you on the show. So first off, how did this moon get its elaborate name, the Super Flower Blood Moon? <laughs> So the super part refers to the fact that the... Yeah, it is exciting. one, one that uh, is certainly memorable. Uh, so where should we be looking for this and, and when should we be looking for it? So Sunday night... Key to getting a good view with this one. 
Uh, just go outside and look up. That's the fun <laughs> That's part about lunar eclipses. No special anything needed. You just need a... You just look up in the sky, no issues. The only thing would be maybe cloud cover that could impact you. How does this one uh, do really differ from the last total eclipse that we saw uh, back in May 2021 and the last widely viewed eclipse in uh, 2019? So this one is, um, um, and, and just to remind folks that you don't need any special glasses to view a lunar eclipse. Nope, nope. If you can normally look at the moon with your, with just your eyes, this is actually the moon even a little darker. <laughs> so, so absolutely nothing to worry about. No special anything. Don't get those solar viewers out from 2017 or else you won't see the moon at all through, <laughs> through those. <laughs> oh, well, thanks so much, Michelle Nichols, the director of uh, public observing at Adler Planetarium there in Chicago. Uh, we really appreciate it. You can find resources for kids like her book, Astronomy Lab for Kids at the website at astroeducator.com and you can watch recaps of this month's eclipse by following Adler Planetarium on Twitter. All right, let's get a look at the cloud cover forecast so you can see where you have the best chance. Yeah, Justin, pretty incredible. I mean, I, I'm looking at the scenes there. I don't know if I've ever seen a fire situation in a, in a neighborhood like that where there's one home that is just fine and the next one that is completely just gone. Do we know, I know it's still pretty right. early, do we know if there was anything done to protect some of those homes that are still standing right now or is it just just the luck of the draw with the fire. I, I at this yeah, no, Justin, such a very good point that you make there. Um, and, you know, it's such a situation that, you know, in the heat of the moment here, it must be near, feel impossible to have to make. They train for that, though. Um, but one, you know, one thing that strikes me about the situation is the conditions didn't seem to be that severe compared to other places in the country. The wind's 30 miles per hour. They weren't 70 miles right. per hour. Like we, we've seen worse weather right. conditions in place, but yet look how rapidly the fire spread. Yeah, 200 acres. Uh, and guys, from what we understand, again, that underbrush that really just be checking back with you mm -hmm. uh, throughout the show, getting more updates on the situation there. But he said it. I mean, it's just so bone dry. You just have to have conditions just enough. And that's what we had yeah, there. Uh, and yep. we've got that in a number of us. There's wow. a lot that happened. Yeah, we were looking at the videos. It's a good thing we do these recaps because there was a lot yeah. of things and a lot of weather happenings across the country. Uh, just a really busy week. Yeah, a lot of extremes. Welcome back into America's Morning Headquarters, getting you through the mid-morning hours, helping you plan for all the big events ahead today and this weekend. Yeah, thanks for sticking with us here. Ending off the week, heading towards the weekend. Hopefully you got a, a, a chance or will get a chance to enjoy your Saturday and Sunday. Uh, the question will be... The weather, of course, how will that have an impact on you? Yes. So let's uh, start with some of the, you know, the big stories that we have out there. We had some fierce thunderstorms blasting through the Midwest yesterday. We're going to talk about that and recap what happened. But now we have to look to see where new storms will fire. Yeah, absolutely. That opportunity existing again in, in portions of the Midwest, maybe not as crazy robust as yesterday, but still some storms to certainly keep an eye out on. So it's cool. It is almost out, but Mother Nature has a few more.